Hi, welcome to Meek Electronics. Want to build an LED counter circuit that's 100% analog? No microcontrollers, no software, just pure electronics? In this video, we're going back to basics and harnessing the timeless power of the 555 timer and CD4017 decade counter to create a clean, effective LED sequence circuit. You'll learn how to calculate the timing pulses manually, select the right resistors, capacitors, and ICs for stable performance, and transform the theory into a working design complete with a schematic, clean wiring, and a custom PCB layout. No code, no IDE, no Arduino, just raw components. To power the sequential LED circuit safely, we start with the AC to DC conversion and voltage regulation stage. The AC then enters a bridge rectifier, which converts it into pulsating DC using four diodes. To smooth out the voltage ripple, we add a large electrolytic capacitor. This stores charge and outputs a more stable DC voltage. That smoothed DC then feeds into a 7805 linear voltage regulator, which outputs a steady 5 volt, perfect for powering the 555 timer. To clean up any high frequency noise, a small decoupling capacitor is placed at the regulator's output, ensuring a solid and clean power supply. This completes the power stage and sets the foundation for reliable timing and sequencing ahead. For a deeper breakdown of the calculations, check out the dedicated video in the Meek Electronics playlist. It covers everything in detail. Let's break down the actual circuit. The timing network consists of three parts. R1 goes from VCC to the discharge pin, which is pin 7. R2 connects from the discharge pin to the threshold and trigger pins, which are pins 6 and 2. And C1 connects from that junction to ground. Here's where the magic happens. C1 charges through both R1 and R2, but discharges only through R2. This creates an asymmetrical square wave with a longer high time and a slightly shorter low time, which is perfect for reliably clocking logic chips like the CD4017. Inside the 555 timer, things get interesting. It's built from two voltage comparators, an SR latch, a discharge transistor, and an output stage. When the voltage on C1 drops below one third of VCC, the lower comparator sets the latch. This drives the output high and turns off the discharge transistor, allowing the capacitor to begin charging again. As soon as C1's voltage rises above two thirds of VCC, the upper comparator resets the latch. This switches the output low and turns on the discharge transistor, which dumps the capacitor's charge to ground. This latch holds its state until the next comparator event, producing a clean square wave output. Here's what each pin does on the 555 timer. Pin 1 is ground, your circuit's reference point. Pins 2 and 6 are the trigger and threshold. They monitor the capacitor voltage. When it drops below one-third VCC, the output goes high. When it rises above two-thirds VCC, the output goes low. Pin 3 is the output. This delivers the pulse train that clocks the CD4017. Pin 4 is the reset pin. Keep this high to let the timer run. Pulling it low stops all pulses. Pin 5 is the control voltage input. We usually connect a 10 nanofarad capacitor to ground here to filter noise and improve stability. Pin 7 is the discharge pin. This acts like a switch to dump the capacitor during the low interval. Pin 8 is VCC. This is your supply voltage, typically 5 volts in our design. Let's break down how timing works in a classic A-stable circuit. An A-stable setup continuously switches between high and low states. A number of pulses per second is the frequency given by F equals 1.44 divided by R1 plus 2 R2 times C. To understand how long each pulse lasts, we calculate the period T equals 1 divided by F which simplifies to T equals 0.694 times R1 plus 2R2 times C. Now each cycle has two distinct parts. T1 equals 0.694 times R1 plus R2 times C. And the low time when it's off, 
T0 equals 0.694 times R2 times C. Put together T1 plus T0 give you the full cycle duration. To analyze the waveform, we look at two key ratios. The mark space ratio which compares high time to low time. T1 divided by T0 and the duty cycle which shows what percentage of the time the output is high. T1 divided by T times 100 strong a 50 percent duty cycle means equal time on and off but with this specific circuit perfect symmetry isn't possible because of how the resistors influence the timing so how do we tweak it increase c and you slow the circuit down frequency drops adjust r1 and you lengthen the high time without changing the low boost r2 and you pull more branch timing and both high and low times stretch, resulting in a lower duty cycle overall. These tweaks let you shape the signal precisely to your needs, whether you're blinking LEDs or modulating a waveform. On screen you'll see my schematic with the CD4017 chip. You too. I've tied the reset pin, 15, and enable pin, 13, to ground so the counter can run freely. The clock input, pin 14, gets pulses from our 555 timer, or any other clock source. Each of the 10 outputs, Q0 to Q9, feeds an orange LED through its own series resistor, and the LED cathodes all return to 0V. With every clock pulse, the 4117 steps one output high, giving that classic running light effect. For calculating the LED resistors, follow these steps. Find your LED's forward voltage, VF. That's usually about 2.0 to 2.2 V. I like 10 milliamps for good brightness without stressing the 4017. Use Ohm's law. R equals VCC minus VF divided by I. For VCC equals 5 volts, VF equals 2.1 volts, IF equals 0.01 amps. R equals 5.0 minus 2.1 divided by 0.01 equals 290 ohms. Pick the next standard value, so I use 300 ohms. Check the power rating. P equals I squared times R equals 0.01 squared times 300 equals 0.03 watts. A 1 quarter watt resistor handles that easily. How the CD4017 works. Inside the 4017, you've got five flip-flops wired as a Johnson counter. Each incoming clock pulse toggles the first flip-flop, then the pattern cascades through the rest. So exactly one of the 10 outputs is high at any moment. When the high bit reaches Q9 on the 10th pulse, the next pulse rolls it back to Q0. This arrangement keeps transitions clean, draws very little quiescent current and gives us a reliable modulo 10 sequence. Perfect for LED chasers and simple displays. Tips and enhancements. Add a 0.1 microfarad decoupling capacitor between VDD pin 16 and VSS pin 8 to smooth out clock noise. Tie any unused outputs to ground or leave them floating to prevent stray currents or ghosting. Need more than 10 steps? Cascade a second 4017 by feeding the carryout, pin 11, into the next chip's clock. From adjustable speed, swap one of the clock resistors for a potentiometer, or use a variable 555 timer upstream. Alright, that's a wrap on today's deep dive into the 555 timer and CD4017 sequential LED counter circuit. We covered how the 555 timer creates consistent pulses how the CD4017 responds by lighting up LEDs in sequence, and how timing components shape the rhythm of the entire system. Ready to take things further? Tune in to part two, where we'll design the PCB layout and get this circuit from the breadboard to something much more permanent. End. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want more hands-on electronics content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.